Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Isle of Man in the UK. This is John and Mike's MMA Corner. 27th of February, Jason Wolf is joining me right now. He is facing Charlie Alexander uh, at Valor Fights. And there's a nice, lovely little strap on the line as well, which gives it a little bit more spice to the contest. Now, Jason, this is fight week. You're now, I imagine, just it's more getting a sweat on, and that's pretty much about it, really, for for the rest, for this week. Correct. Basically, just going over the game plan, finalizing a couple touches, making my weight, just being smart. Obviously, all fighters know during uh, fight week, you don't want to get hurt. You don't want to do anything stupid to cause you not to be able to fight. Obviously, I imagine the game plan is to win. I imagine that's the original oh, game. Have, yep. Oh, have, you know, any, any fighter walks into a cage, they're not walking in there to to just lose. They're going in and win. And, uh, you know, I know Charlie's coming in. He's preparing himself as the best that he can. I know I've prepared myself as best that I can. And we're both going for the same goal, and that's to win. Now, I, I spoke to Charlie already, and I said to him, what I... I look forward to amateur bouts a lot more than I did, say, five years ago. Or even, yeah, like, I'll say five years ago, not even, not even that. You don't have to go to ten years, just go five years ago. It, the standard nowadays of amateur fighters is at such a higher level that it is worth, it's actually worth getting excited about. And it's, it, you know, it's, it's exciting to watch, you know, the guys coming through in the amateur ranks with yourself and Charlie you know it's it's an exciting fight that's going to happen because the pair of you aren't just two guys that have got no experience and don't know what you're doing if that makes sense yeah it does no with his I know some of doing some research on him I know he has an 83 record uh, I know he's taken some time off between fights just like I did I, I, I took off five years he took off two but you can just tell the you know, when you take some time off, the difference of those two years and actually getting better and fine tuning yourself. Um, that's kind of what I did. You know, my last fight it really showed a lot of things have actually improved um, from what I used to fight five years ago, and uh, I knew basically it was now or never if I was going to continue fighting or not. And obviously, Valor gave me a, a nice opportunity to fight on their card and fight for the lightweight title. And then, obviously, showcase myself and then fight again, hopefully soon, hopefully on the April 29th card. Well, if you can keep active, it's always a good thing. Also, uh, I, I don't know how much you know yourself about this, but I was speaking to Tim Lowe, the, the CEO of the, the Valor Fights, and he was saying that they, they're, they're pretty much... They're almost waiting for the ink to dry on a UFC Fight Pass deal as well. That that's just going to help expose all the fighters, no matter if you are fighting at the pro level or you're fighting at the amateur level. Mm. It's just going to help expose each person to the general public, yeah. especially people who who have the UFC Fight Pass or or get or getting the UFC Fight Pass. They can actually see fighters, not just in the UFC or other bigger uh, organizations like Bellator and stuff like that, or World Series of Fighting, mm -hmm. but you can actually see them in you can see them in NFC, you can see them in NAAFS, uh, GFC, different promotions that back in the day, five years ago, you didn't have that. No. So I'm... basically, you get into the door with actually just if you knew somebody, that's how you got into a door. Yeah. And I think as well, like you said there, the the exposure, because even if you've got friends that live in the same area as you that maybe would like to watch you fight, but they can't make it for whatever reason, maybe distance or commitments that they can't get away from, the fact that they can just have fight pass and then sit there and watch it from home, it's, it's just a nice oh. excess. It's just another thing that adds to it, you know, it just helps, I think. It helps the sport grow, and yeah. it helps the people who, like you just said, who are 
unable for some odd reason. Even if, let's say you have training partners and they can't go because of obviously you're only allowed. If let's say you go to Vegas and you're fighting, you only have three people fighting, and or somewhere else uh, um, out of the country, but it's on the UFC Fight Pass. Mm -hmm. They can actually see it and watch it instead of instead of waiting to see what happens. They yeah. know what's going on immediately. Yeah, exactly. And you said before that you know you had the five years off and Charlie had the time off and. You know, there's a difference with him, and, and same with yourself. The, that's maturity, though. That's just that's just something that comes along with time. You know, you do mature as a as a person, as a fighter, and you know you'll look back at some of the stuff you did, and you'll also watch fights, not that you've competed in, but just fights in general, and you'll see a lot, and you absorb a lot. Your brain just absorbs it all without you even knowing. Subconscious just takes it all in, and then when you do train and you and you start to you know, just smoothing off those rough edges and clean everything up. It's just a different. You're always gonna. You should be a different fighter, especially you know, with when the guys have, when you guys have had time off. You should have. A, you should definitely have larger improvements. Oh, you do totally. And another thing that I will say is, when you take time off, you actually appreciate the sport a lot more. Mm. Um, because. So many people jump into it, just like any other sport. You get into it, and you expect it to be there. But if it's taken away dramatically, or for some, could be financial reasons, could be personal reasons, whatever reasons, and it's taken away from you, when you actually get that opportunity back, you actually appreciate that opportunity a lot more. You tend to work harder a lot more than what you did before. Um, you understand a lot, a lot of things, and actually you... I would just say, like I said, you care about it a lot more, so it's it's a better situation overall. Yeah, you do care. Yeah, I I'd agree with you on that one. Yeah, there there, there is like a it's like a bond, isn't it? A connection that you have with it, you know. And it's you know the fight game. Like not every sport is for everyone. You know, there are people out there who actually think golf is an exciting sport, and. Do you know what that you know? And cricket, there's people out there who think cricket is a, a, a decent sport, and that's fine. But then there's guys like like yourselves. We love MMA, and it's just a connection and a bond that when, like, say when it, when you have that time off and then you get back to it, you almost like you say it's like you fall in love again. Oh, you do. It, it's it's the appreciation mm. of of the sport and us I you know the appreciation of competition going against somebody else um the art of combat because like you said there's not a lot of people who can a lot of people like the sport obviously the popularity is out there how many people can actually do the sport how many people can get into a ring or a cage and perform and perform at a high level um who can take a punch who can give a punch and afterwards be respectful towards each other because that's what it is. It's a respect towards each other, but it's a competition to see who is better at that day. That's it's, it's like any given Sunday in football, anyone can be beat, and and in MMA, it's the same way. Anyone can be beat any given time. That's yes. Why you put as much work and hard work and dedication into it, so you try to keep those incidents from ever happening. You do, you, you, you're spot on there. Now, with your time off then, what did you learn about yourself and, and just in general, what kind of things changed for you in in MMA context? Basically, changing the skill. More people are becoming more mixed. Well, actually, in 2010, everyone was doing Muay Thai or kickboxing, wrestling, and jiu-jitsu. Now you see other fighters starting to incorporate other martial arts out there in, in, into their game. Taekwondo, um, obviously judo with Ronda Rousey. Mm. Uh, different players are bringing different, different styles, including the basic styles that, that were before. Yeah. So every day the game is, the game is evolving more and more and more. Now, if somebody ever sits there and says, I'm good at one thing and that's all I need, or I'm good at two things, that's not going to work anymore. It, obviously, at one time, one art was good, and now it's up to two or three. Now it's getting to a point where it, you're having to do four, 
five, six different things to be able to evolve with everything. Yeah. Which is not bad. It, it, it's what mixed martial arts is. It's mixed. It's everything. Obviously, you're not going to be the greatest at everything, but if you're well, well-rounded at your home and, and honing your skills, you will be fine. Yeah, you, you could never have the level of boxing that, like an Evander Holyfield or Mike Tyson or Lennox Lewis or, you know, an Oscar De La Hoya. Never going to have that level of boxing because you can't box for that long and because you won't have time to do everything else. But as long as you can get the bait, as long as you get the foundations, the fundamentals of certain martial arts, that will help round your game off as long as you understand the fundamental side of it. Yeah. You know, and that thing is, is, everyone knows this on the documentary of what Bruce Lee, he, he had five different martial arts. That, and, it, and I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I know he was he had five martial arts that he took, and he would expert five or ten moves of them, and then based everything off of that. That's kind of where the, the world of MMA is. That you get your basic moves from different styles, yeah, and then you hone them, and basically become great at those skills. And then when you go against somebody else, they might have a different skill. Whose skill is basically honed better? Yeah, it is. Yeah, is the result. And that's what I love about the sport. That you, like you say, it is guys are just adding and girls. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to be sexist there. I didn't try to leave the ladies out. Sorry. You know, fighters are just adding more to their game. They're experimenting a lot more. They're also the beautiful thing is people are trying now to kind of blend the martial arts together so people are trying to link in different martial arts catch wrestling jiu-jitsu to then Muay Thai they're trying to think how they can blend them all in to make them not just individual martial arts but one martial art is you know so it flows rather than having it is broken up into each bit they're trying to th- and that's what I love about it you see so you'll watch a fight and you'll you see how people mix all the transitions up and it's just something to really get excited about and especially with the amateur ranks it's something that you're able to do a lot more experimenting in. You can you can do a lot more to learn your trade, learn the craft of the 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 pro uh, before you go into the pro ranks, and then obviously you get to see you this level where you're fighting for a title at the amateur ranks. So it means it clearly shows that your your skill set is more well rounded than other amateurs, which means you're closer to the pro ranks. Right, correct. I agree with that 100. percent and that's the thing like you're now at that stage where that's the thing when the titles start coming along and there's there's titles all around and that's what you'll that's what you'll do when you're in the amateur ranks it's basically kind of saying that you're not you may be one or two fights away from pro ranks or it's a case of when you feel ready off you go to the pro ranks is that something that's been in your mind I'm not every fight I look at it like this every fight is a different challenge yeah. Um. Obviously, this fight coming up, they offered this one, and then, like I said, they they offered me a pro debut in April 29th if I take this card. Well, that's fine and Danny, but also at the same time, when I took it up, I know 100%, hey, I have to perform. I have to do well. I have to win on this. Yeah. If not, why do I want to turn pro in a loss? You don't do that. No. So, and I don't know what I don't know what Charlie's situation is like. Um, so I can't speak for him. But I would say if they were offering him the same thing, hey, you got two people, uh, one post spot, whoever wins gets to go on. So yeah. that's how it looks. And every, every, like I said, that's when it's then it goes back to your, ch- like, you never want to lose. It's your competition. I don't want to lose. I never want to lose. I don't want to lose on anything. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's an argument. I don't care if it's a game of checkers, a, play, a PlayStation game, or a fight. I don't like losing. And going into this fight, I want to make sure I do everything I need to do. I perform well, execute everything I need to do, get the win. And then when I'm walking into the April 29th part, I'm on, I'm on a roll. Yes. And that's what I want. Yeah, you've got that momentum built. You've got that confidence. And that's what you... Yeah, exactly. So when you go in there, you know you're going to just keep continue doing what you're doing. Just keep on building on top of, on top of the foundation that you built. Exactly. And look... You've got exactly. You're not looking too far ahead. You're looking at exactly what's happening this weekend when you fight Charlie Alexander, the Valor fights. Now people can stream the fight because it's 
it's on the if you go to Valor Fights web page there is uh, links to ha- it basically tells you how to go and stream it if you want to watch it if you cannot make it to the venue itself which is you know not everyone can get to any every venue that of every card that happens around the world so that's the beautiful thing about technology is that we can stream stuff these days and it's starting to become more and more common which I love now before I let you go can you let everyone know what your social media stuff and that is um actually my Facebook page is Jason Wolf W-O-R-F um that's the only thing I have set up now I'm kind of old school um you know if I get this win and keep on going forward obviously I'll start getting bigger onto the uh the social media but as of right now it's just Jason Jason Wolf on the uh the Facebook page hey, oh you'll have to when you when you turn out pro ranks you're gonna have to start getting all that social media going and telling you it's that it's got to happen. I have to. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, mate, it's an absolute pain in the backside maintaining it all, but you've got to do it. It's part and parcel of the game, my friend. Uh, what about like uh, if you have any sponsors or and if you you know give us give a shout out to your gym, your training partners, I, friends, family, stuff like that. I, I do want to give a shout out to the three gyms I've been training at: X Three, Strikers, and Great uh, um, West Cobb and Georgia. Um, Shout out to all my teammates. Um, I have a long list, so I can't really list them all, but I want to say thank you to each and every one of you guys for helping me get ready for this fight, uh, being there for me, taking the beatings, and giving me the beatings that I need, uh, pushing me, all my coaches and professors, my family. Um, most of all, God, for giving me an opportunity to step into the cage. And that's it. Look. Thank you very much for your time. Jason, have a great fight and have a great weekend. Enjoy yourself, okay? Yes, sir. You too. Thank you so much.